Wednesday podcast. It's your girl, Danny. And on this week's episode, I do have a very, very special guest in the building. I have the KSAP from Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Hello. Hey, how you doing, man? I appreciate your time. I appreciate you having me on the show. Like we said, it's been a long time coming, but we said we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this epic. We're going to give the people what they want. So I do appreciate you having me on and keep doing what you're doing out there. Salute. Likewise. Same to you, King. Thank you so much for your time and for being here. So let's just go ahead and get started and introduce you to the guests. Tell us about yourself and your podcast. Yeah, you know, everybody knows me, man. My, my name is KSAP. I'm the man behind the mic of the Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. My podcast ain't hard to find, man. I'm on the streaming platforms. You know, Pandora, um, Apple Music, Google Music, Spotify, wherever you can stream something on a podcast, I'm there. Also, I just recently started a YouTube channel, so that's at Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Also, I'm on Facebook as well, Simply Ball Dropping. Also, everybody is on Instagram, so I'm at Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. Also, man, you know, I got my merch, so, you know, I got a shout-out plug, just the man behind the mic plug. But if you go to my website, there's all kinds of stuff that you can browse around. And that's pretty much it, man. Like I said, I appreciate you for having me. I'm happy to have you here. Thank you for being here. Okay, so everybody has, you guys have his information, how to find them, how to tune into his show. And um, he has some amazing content, so make sure you go ahead and check him out. So now the first question that I had for you is to tell me your favorite sports teams. Like, just break it down for me. That is like, not the most important question, but I feel like that's the most relevant one for the type of platform you have. I need to know who your teams are. Well, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be frankly honest with you because I always keep it honest. Okay. In football, I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. Minnesota, hands down. I stay in Dallas. I cannot stand the Cowboys. I'm originally from Maryland. I don't like the Redskins or the Ravens. My son likes the Ravens, but I'm a Minnesota Vikings fan. Okay, that's in football. Okay. Now, college football, I'm Notre Dame. Notre Dame all the way. You know, you got to represent that 14 karat gold helmet. I'm Notre Dame all the way. Now, when it comes to basketball, this is a trick question here. This Uh-oh. is a trick question. Uh-oh. Growing up, you know, everybody followed Michael Jordan back in my time. Mm. So I was rocking with Chicago because I was a big Michael Jordan fan, rooting for Chicago. So in basketball, I really don't have no teams. I'm an individual player type dude, right? So when Allen Iverson broke on the scene, I cheered for Philadelphia. But then when Allen Iverson's career fizzled out a little bit, you know, I'm rocking with the king, LeBron James. So wherever LeBron goes, that's where I go. Not I'm a big be. LeBron fan, and, you know, I'm not a Laker fan, but since LeBron is with the Lakers, I cheer for him because I want to see LeBron do well, but I'm a big LeBron fan, so, and in baseball, Baltimore Orioles all day long. Oh, okay. We love LeBron. We have the same birthday, so I'll, I'll always be, a, you know, a fan of his. You're a smart person. Yeah, he, he's an amazing athlete. So, appreciate that one okay so you have all the teams now do you watch anything like bowling or tennis or any other like less I'm not gonna say less popular sports but sports that aren't talked about as much oh yeah i watch all sports see i'm well-rounded see that's one thing about ksap i'm well-rounded when you talk about bowling i i actually bowl me too so you know i'm a i'm a Pretty good bowler. And okay. tennis, that's one thing I watch because I love the, the Williams sisters and the new generation that's coming up. But I could never play tennis. I could play ping pong, mm-hmm. but I could never play tennis. That's one thing that I struggled at. I can't play tennis. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I'm an avid golfer as well. I golf as well. So I watch a lot of golf. You know, shout out to Tiger Woods. I know he's down right now having another back surgery, but I'm an avid golfer. I watch hockey. I've, I've been to hockey games and to go to hockey games are more exciting when you're in the arena, but we can't do that now because of the pandemic. Mm-hmm. But back in the days when I used to go, it was real exciting versus of watching it on television. You get more excitement when you're there because mm-hmm. it's, 
It's fast paced. You follow the little buck going back and forth, but watching it on television, it gets real boring. But to yeah. be there is real exciting. But I watch, I watch all sports. So I watch the World Cup. I watch soccer. I watch it all. Okay, so you are the sports guy. Like, oh yeah, I watch it better. all. Okay, this is the elite right here. <laughs> awesome. Okay, <laughs> that's amazing. And um, so I have a very important question that I. I've had, I wanted to ask you for a very long time, okay? And um, it's, the question is, do men prefer women who are into sports? Now see, that, that's, a, that's a question that I love to answer. Okay. I don't, I don't think it's, do men prefer women that are in sports? It's always great that women love sports, right? Okay. So if you're in a relationship mm -hmm. and your woman does not watch sports, that's not a deal breaker mm -hmm. because you know how women are. Women are so set on their reality TV shows. They want to watch the reality TV shows and that's all they know when it comes to TV shows. But when it comes to sports, a lot of women, they don't watch sports. So as a man, you have to take your time to groom your woman to watch the sports, right? Because like in my situation, being a married man, my wife, she played sports. She, she watches some sports all the time, but she's not really tuned in the way I'm tuned in. But it's always good that, you know, she asks me questions like when we're watching football, what does this mean? I can tell her. So it comes accustomed to her enjoying the sport even more. And it's crazy because I always tell people, I love a woman that loves sports. And I see all these beautiful black ladies that are in sports. They're journalists, they're announcers. Um, they break it down. And I'm like, man, that's impressive the way this female knows her sports and breaks it down. So for the guys that are out there listening to the show and they're gonna see the show, when you have a woman and she says she don't like sports, that's not a deal breaker. You can groom that woman into liking sports. Mm -hmm. um, that's a man's job because if sometimes I'd be around the house, this is no joke. I could hear a commercial on television without seeing it and I can hear that voice and I'll shout out, that's so-and-so on TV. My wow. wife would be like, baby, how do you know that? Because I know from watching sports and watching all these shows, I know their voices and I could put their you know, the face with a voice and I can just pick up real quick because I watch it all from announcers. I, I know who's speaking. I know who that person is, but guys, I'm here to tell you, don't let not a woman not knowing sports be a deal breaker because that's not, because I think that that just adds to it. If a woman loves sports, oh man, you got the, you got the total pack, then okay. you got a total pack. So I don't think men, prefer women that love sports but it it goes a long way if they do like sports nice okay well so for me i love sports i watch them all um maybe not hockey i would love to go to a hockey game i've never been but i love sports i'm football basketball i, I told you i bowl I'm a, I'm a coach so i'm oh. definitely someone who's into sports and um I always wondered that. I'm like, I don't know what it's like for a guy to be with a woman who doesn't know sports because all I know is sports too. So I just always wondered, like, is that like a deal breaker or is it a bonus for us women who... I think it's a bonus. I think okay. it's a bonus because when guys, when guys sit around, just normal guys in general conversation, right? You know how guys talk. You know, mm -hmm. guys get together and they talk about women and stuff like that and what they like and what they don't like. But when you say prefer women in sports, there's a lot of guys through conversation that I had, you know, just my upbringing and just being around guys and hear them talk. A lot of people be like, man, I just wish my girl would just sit down and watch sports with me and, wow. and this and that. But it's like, because that, that could be a twofold question on guys preferring um, women in sports 
Mm -hmm. because I don't know the mindset of every man. I know my mindset. It wouldn't be a deal breaker for me, but it would enhance it because that would be great. Because like I said earlier, all women, they like the TV shows of the reality shows and all the gossip and stuff like that. It's more to TV shows besides gossip and all the reality stuff. Right. Watch sports with me. That, and, and listen, I'll, I'll flip it this way. Okay. That could be a big turn on. There okay. you go. There you go. That's key right there. The ladies will love to hear that. <laughs> yes, that's, that's a big turn on. Okay. Wow. Nice. Ladies, take notes. This is coming from a married man, you know. Everybody out here trying to snag someone. So <laughs> that's, that's the way right there. And um, has COVID affected your personal experience with sports in any type of way? Like for your platform, like watching or getting content or anything like that? No, I mean, it. not really, because when the pandemic first started, you know, sports slowed down. We didn't have the live sports, but they always would have replays on stuff that was seen back in the days where you could follow you know, further your knowledge mm -hmm. if you're a sports podcaster, right? Mm -hmm. So you can go back into the vault and look at some things that might have happened back in 2000, 1995, classic sports, where you can enhance your knowledge and you can enhance your content. So when you start talking about something that is sports related and you have these old clips, you can take your notes on it. You know what I'm saying? For people out there that's doing a sports podcast, you know, I'm I'm well-rounded in the sports. You know, like I said, I talk all the sports and I do a lot of research as well because I have to research before I drop a podcast on my sports because I want to come across as a person knowing what I'm talking about. I want to give you the facts. I don't want people fact-checking me. I don't want people to listen to my show and be like, Oh, he's blowing a bunch of smoke because it's not that. Because when I drop sports content and we talk sports, I talk facts. You know, I always tell people, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. So when you're presenting somebody with, with stats and you're getting them correct, then people can't come to you and be like, oh, he don't know what he's talking about. So I'll just tune him out. This guy on the Simply Ball dropping podcast. Now he don't know what he's talking about. So I won't, I won't listen to him. So when you're doing your sports, you got to have your facts. So through this pandemic, I've had done a lot of research. But personally, when I dropped content, when it started picking back up, normally me and my son would always attend these games in the Dallas area. We would go to football games. We would go to basketball games. We go to the Mavericks games, whoever the Mavericks are playing. We grab a ticket, go watch because my son loves sports as well. But through this pandemic, personally, I don't think it has affected me. It hasn't affected my content because I knew how to keep busy. You know what I'm saying? And the thing about it is I said I'm well-rounded. And then through the pandemic, I don't only talk sports, guys. I don't only talk sports. I can talk anything that you want me to talk. I can talk relationships. I can talk financial stuff. I can go into the politics. I can do it all. So that's why... I, me and my wife sat down with a game plan, and that's why we came up with the Simply Ball Dropping Mar Marriage Chronicles. So through this pandemic, I think it has helped my podcast channel grow as well. Nice. Awesome. Because you introduced other avenues into it. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. Wow, that's, that's good. Anytime, yeah. Any way to capitalize is, is amazing. Now, do you think that the safety measures in sports are obsessive or do you think they're pretty fair? Like, um, like in addition to that, I know at one point, like in the beginning, players were like opting out of their contracts due to COVID concerns. So I just wanted to know, like, what were your thoughts on those two things? See, my, my personal thoughts in, in, in when the pandemic first started and, you know, everything took place. It took that one stupid, that superstar athlete to be diagnosed with a positive test in Rudy Gobert. Mm -hmm. And once Rudy Gobert got diagnosed in the NBA with the Utah Jazz, it was a snowball effect. So everything got shut down. Mm -hmm. Every, it went from basketball and then 
the NCAA was looking at it, NFL was looking at it, Major League Baseball was looking at it. So they kind of like shut everything down. So the measures that they had in place, they had to come up with a protocol because for people out there, man, this this is a this is a deadly disease, man. And this is no joke. And safety goes a long way. And I tell people, for all the measures that they have in place now, if you wasn't doing them beforehand, mm -hmm. that tells me a lot about you as a person. If you wasn't washing your hands, if you wasn't, you know, spraying your house down, you know, me and my wife, we frequently I, I used to buy Lysol all the time. So it wasn't a big deal to me. We just, we just, we just like a clean house. We like a clean environment. You know what I'm saying? And for people that don't wash their hands, I always put emphasis on my kids and especially my son in and out of the house. As soon as you come in, wash your hands, right? So the protocol that the leagues have put in place and when they opened the sports back up and they went down to the bubble, I think the NBA got it right. I don't know what they was doing down in that bubble to have no positive tests and to keep everybody safe and all the disaffection they was doing and the tests that they was doing. I know they got access to stuff that the norm don't have, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they got it right because guys was continuing to play. Nobody had to sit out in the bubble because they was, you know, tested positive. Right. They had to quarantine if they left the bubble to get back in the bubble. So that was fair. And I told people, if the NBA gets it right, the Major League Baseball, they should follow suit. But they couldn't follow suit because of the fact that they was letting them travel in and out of different states, right? Like the Florida Marlins. They was, the, the team that was down there playing the Marlins, they went out in the nightlight. Come on now, you can't do that. You're supposed to set still. Right. It's protocols that they have in place. So all the measures that they have in place now, I totally agree with them. It's stern. You guys get paid millions of dollars. So just heed to these protocols. If you're going out somewhere, just wear your mask. It's, it's not that it's not that hard. You get paid millions of dollars. But I think me and my partner always say this. We think that start athletes think they're immune to this like it's not going to affect them right because they have money that they're, they're well built they train a lot and it's not going to bring them down like the norm mm -hmm. but at the same time you still got to heed to the protocols that these leagues have in have in place for you guys and to me personally i think it's a great thing and i think now since the nba people will have to sit out and these games are postponed i think they should be more stern you know, they just released that every player on the bench now has to have a mask on when they when they're not in the game. Uh -huh. So protocols have been because Adam Silver, he has he's on top of this. Mm -hmm. And you know, the NBA is one of them sports that's on top of this. See, football, you got people they traveling in the different cities and states. It's travel, it's travel. But when the NBA was in the bubble, people were still. So now that the NBA has brought it back up, and I like what Miami's doing. They bring in the COVID sniffing dogs into the arena for the fans that are coming in. You know, they're just trying to get a hold of this thing because this thing is spreading like wildfire. And a lot of people think this stuff is a joke. So I think the protocols that they have in place now, I think it's great. I think it should, I think they should enhance it even more because these guys think that just because they're not playing and they have a day off, they can go out in the city and do things. And the thing about these athletes, they, 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 it kills me. Every time they go somewhere, somebody's gonna snap a video, somebody's gonna take a picture, they're gonna post it in social media. And you see what happened to Lemon Pepper Lou when he was down in the bubble. He goes back home, supposed to be going to his grandfather's funeral, but he in the strip club getting wings, stops to pose for a picture. They can take that picture out of context. That could have been a quick snap after he got his wings and he left but it looked like he was posted up in the club. So right. the protocols that they got in place, I totally agree with them. Me too. Perception is everything. And it's like, at the end of the day, you guys have a job to do, you know? And um, I think more teams should adapt the protocols that, you know, Miami are adapting and things like that, that are strict and enforcing these players and holding them accountable for, for their actions. I think is I think is definitely needed. Totally definitely. agree.
Now, what has your experience been like in terms of getting like support for your podcast, your platform? Man, it's, it's, it's crazy. This is something that I see every day on Instagram about mm -hmm. support. Okay. And, and you had you had the Barbie Way podcast, mm -hmm. Courtney V on your podcast. I, Shout out I to know, Courtney V. Hey. Yeah, that, that was a great episode that you guys did. I went on your YouTube channel and, and I watched that. Thank you. And me and her um, did a collaboration and we was talking about support. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't think people's support is genuine support, right? And I always tell people, it's kind of funny that on Instagram, you have a lot of people that have thousands of followers, right? Mm -hmm. And But people don't support what they do because you'll post something about your podcast, right? Podcast dropping the day. Please go take a listen. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to you, when you're looking at it, you'll like it, you'll go do what you got to do. And then you only see five and six likes, but you got over a thousand followers. Where is the support? Where is the support in the podcast community? There is enough to go around for everybody to eat. And people, y'all have to, y'all have to back these podcasters up. We're on this platform together, but we all doing the same thing. It's one common goal is to get your voice heard, to get somebody to say, hey, I can invest in this podcast, right? So if I'm not doing what you're telling me to do, like, hey, like if you come to me, it's like, hey, KSAP, can you share my podcast? I'm going to share it. You don't even have to tell me. I'm going to share your podcast. Mm -hmm. Sometimes on particular days, I'll put people's podcasts on my stories, right? Go follow this podcast. Go support this podcast. It goes a long way. I, I see people talking about different stuff and I'm like, wow. And I'll take, I'll give you a prime example on how people do these celebrities that they don't know. Right. A, you're, fo you're following a celebrity and a celebrity can wake up in the morning and say, Hey, it's cloudy outside and take a picture of the sky, post it on their Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Mm -hmm. You look at it, they got a million likes in all these comments because they took a picture of a sky. Now, if you support these celebrities that you don't know, why can't you support people that you're really rocking with? There so it, it kills me, but that's why I do a lot of self-promotion, right? Sometimes if you throw something up on the wall, you throw enough mud on the wall, it's going to stick, right? I'm going to throw it in your face. So I do self-promotion. A lot of people that might not say they own social media and I have their number. When I drop an episode, I'm sending that direct link via text. I'm not scared to slide up in your inbox. I'm not scared to slide up in your DM. I'm throwing it out there. You might not like it, but somebody else might like it. So I always, at the end of all my segments, I always say, tell a friend to tell a friend. That's right. So with this Anchor podcast, Anchor has been doing a great job because um, this was before, I think before Christmas, I had got two new sponsorships. Okay. And the thing about with Anchor, I don't know if you've done this and people that's going to watch this, I want y'all to take heed to what you need to do with Anchor. You need to email Anchor and say, hey, I understand that you gave me the Anchor sponsorship when am I due for another sponsorship? I've emailed Anchor about three or four times asking when am I up for another sponsorship? They'll, they'll re reply back that you're queued up for another sponsorship. And once that sponsorship hits, we'll let you know. So I'll wait about a week. Don't hear nothing. Don't see a new sponsor come up in my, um, my thing. I'll email them back. I'm reaching back out because you said I'm queued up for another sponsor, but I haven't received nothing. Mm -hmm. So once I sent that second email, it was two days later, I received another sponsorship in Anchor. They gave me a notification, went to the money, I had to activate that sponsor. Wow. So it's, it's certain things that you got to do with, with Anchor to get them sponsorships. 
And when we, I'm talking, I'm going back to, to the support. Now with the support, it's like, you have to really be cognizant of what you do when you're talking about support. I say that to say this because a lot of people, like I said, they're not going to support you. Mm -hmm. You can't focus on the people that's not supporting you. You only can focus on the people that do support you. So I tell people when I post my stats about my views and my streams, I don't do that to say, hey, I'm the big man on campus. I do that to let my supporters that are generally rocking with me and let them know that I appreciate your support and all you do, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be able to reach these milestones that I'm reaching. So continue to support me, continue to rock out with me. So I'm not, right now, I'm not focused on the people that don't support me. I could care less. I'm only focused on the people that are really rocking with your boy and and sharing my stuff. And that goes a long way. Okay, that's definitely good information for myself because I don't think I've ever had an anchor sponsorship. Yeah, you got you got to you email them. Go in their support and email them about a sponsor and say, hey, when am I due for my next sponsorship? Yes. Probably my first sponsor because I don't think I've ever received one. I, I have to check. Yeah. That's definitely good information to um, have. So I have a little story time I want to tell you about that's attached to my next question for you. So uh, in terms of football, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Giants fan, right? And um, I grew up, so it was me and my sister who's uh, deceased now, but uh, she was two years older than me. And then I have, we have two cousins that are a little further apart in age in terms of siblings, but my sister and my, and my cousin were the same age. So kind of the four of us hung out, right? Now their father was a cow is a Cowboys fan. And so when I tell you I'm a sports girl, I'm a sports girl. Like I watch it, I follow it, I know the rules, I know the calls, the plays, all of that. So it used to really grind my gears when let's say Dallas wins or if they even beat us or whatever. And then you know, you'll see a post on Instagram and tag you like, oh, y'all cow, y'all giants fans mad and this and that. And my my response is always has always been to them you're only a fan because your father is a fan you don't know anything about football i could ask you give me five players on the cowboys roster and you couldn't tell me you can't even tell me who the head coach's name tell me who the defensive um coordinator's name is (laughs) right and they used to get so pissed off with me because i'm like don't Okay, so I used to get mad because I'm like, I'm a sports girl. You're like by association. So yeah. stop frauding and, you know, flaunting it like you know what's going on when you really don't because the minute somebody asks you a question, you're going to be stuck. Yes. So I always wonder, like, are women who take on sports teams only because of their spouse or their dad being a fan, are they considered real fans to you? See, I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to piss no nobody off. I don't want to piss nobody off. So I'm, I'm going to keep it politically okay. correct on this one. I'm glad that you gave that little segment that you gave in yeah. your time, right? <laughs> and before I answer the question, I'm just going to piggyback on a few things that you said. Okay. I truly believe what you just said. Mm -hmm. because not just women, there are some guys like that as well. And I'm just going to take an example. Um, I'm from the Maryland area, right? That doesn't mean that I have to root for the teams that are in Maryland because my family roots for them, right? When you grow up, you're attached to it and you're watching it because your mother and father, right? But when you grow old enough to realize what's really going on, you should be able to decipher who you want to root for, right? And prime example, with my son, me being a Minnesota Vikings fan, I was not going to groom him to be a Minnesota Vikings fan. Mm -hmm. Once he grew, he's 13 now, I mean 12 now, 
And once he grew up, he started playing sports, basketball, and football, and he understood the concept of it. He chose his own team. He went with the Baltimore Ravens as his football team. College football, he likes Michigan State. So, yeah, he likes LeBron, but his favorite player is Kyrie Irving. Okay. But he still cheers for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. So I let him do what he wants, wants to do. And I tell these Cowboy fans here in Dallas, you're born and raised in Dallas. You're talking about all these Super Bowls that you had, but they got these Super Bowls before you was even born. So you was brought up in a household where you was forced to be a Cowboy fan. Just because you saw your parents rooting for him, you thought that was the right thing to do. But like you said, you go and ask him a question like, give me your starting five. Mm -hmm. Give me your starting, you know, who's your offensive line? Who's your quarterback? Who's your running back? They can't answer them questions. Nope. Well, I'm just a Cowboy fan. And you go back to saying the post. I see it all day, people going back and forth on Facebook about the Cowboys and the Redskins and the Giants because – the NFC, even I throw the Eagles in there as well. Mm -hmm. But your segment, and I say this to say this, it was great because you touched on a lot of things that a lot of people need to hear and a lot of people might not say it. So to answer your question, I think that people are forced to like these teams because of their family members. And they don't go out on their own understanding because if you ask somebody not just women it goes for guys too mm -hmm. if you ask somebody about certain situations they wouldn't even know they just they just riding the wave that's all that is so i agree with you 100 percent. that's that's how we stand in sports yes okay i'm really happy to hear that because i'm telling you it continue on for years and years and I will tell them hey, don't even talk about sports to me um, because you're not a real fan I'm sorry to me this is my platform I'm going to say it if you want to stay neutral you are not a real fan if you've been conditioned to like a team based say on that, say that again say that one they need to hear that <laughs> you are not a real fan if you were conditioned to like a specific team Salute. I'm glad we can agree. Yes. And, um, I say that all the time, and people are like, uh, and I said, let's, let's, we, I can debate about that with you all day because it's just, it is what it is. There's, to me, you have to be who you are. Like, even like um, you said with your son, you didn't push that narrative on him that he needed to be a part of, you know, he needed to like this team. Yes. And a lot of, I feel like a lot of, I'll say women in, in, in this example in general, kind of, I feel like they just say things or like attach themselves to that just to either satisfy the father or satisfy the husband or the spouse. Like you really don't have any interest in what's going on. You're just rocking with this team because that special guy in your life is telling you that that's the team that they like. And I think it's, I think it's kind of corny. I'm gonna be honest. I think it's kind of corny. <laughs> but, but that goes back to the first question that you asked me about women in sports. You know, is, is that something guys prefer? Now, like you said, a lot of women that get kudo points from the guy that they're dating, you know, they got this stigma where it's called fake the funk, you okay. know, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm not saying that women do this, but there could be some women out there doing this just to keep their man around. You know what I'm saying? And okay, my baby likes so-and-so, I'm rocking whatever he likes. But at the same time, be sincere. If you, if you don't like the sport, just be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to just say, hey, I like them because my man likes them. Just be honest, man. You, you, you'll never know what you're missing until you ask for insight on it. So if you ask for insight on particular sports, basketball, football, you might start enjoying it a little bit more in your relationship. Because like I said, not to knock all women, but you know, it's like they have this thing about their reality TV. 
Mm-hmm. Now I can sit down and watch reality TV to get a big kick and a laugh right. and know the predecessors that are on it. Right. But as a woman coming from your point of view, you being in sports, I love that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love your knowledge that you know about sports, you watch it. So if I ask you a question, you're going to know. Mm-hmm. But for particular women, they're not going to know. So just take the time to ask your man. I mean, you ain't got to say, I like them because you like them. Man, just lean on your own understanding, man, and try to understand sports just a little better. Absolutely. Then, ladies, listen up. And it's so funny because I literally had a girlfriend of mine. Like, she was so into this guy. And when I tell you she knew nothing about football, she literally had me, like, you know, give her the playbook of (laughs) this is (laughs) – I'm serious, like how to follow the game just so that she can be more, I guess, appealing or, you know, have that not really upper hand, but I guess for him, it was big for him to have someone who was into sports, especially football. Yes. And I mean, I, I found it hilarious. Of course I helped her out, but I'm like, you know, should this go further, you're going to have to do your own work and do your own research because you can't call me. I'm not going to be like a fly on the wall when y'all are having these conversations. (laughs) And what are you going to do then when these conversations about sports come up and you sit in there stuck? Yes. And it's just so interesting. Sometimes I think what lengths people will do to uh, get the attention of a person. But I feel like that's a story for another time. I (laughs) I digress. Now, um, I actually just finished... I was in class before this episode, but um, I was also watching because, you know, high school just started. Yeah. And so now, you know, they're streaming all the games for fans as an alternative since we can't watch it in person. So what are your thoughts on that? Like, um, like I can, I can tell you the game I just watched, it was very, it was, it was a good live to watch. However, Like you can't see, you can see the score and you can see the quarter and, you know, in the record, in the live footage, but you couldn't see how many minutes were left on the clock. You couldn't see like, you know, oh, it's, you know, if it's 22 seconds, like on the clock, is this the last play? You couldn't see any of that stuff. So it kind of took some of the, what's the word I'm looking for? The authenticity, authenticity out of it for me because I'm sitting there like, well, man, how much time is left on the clock? It just says fourth, meaning fourth quarter, but that was it. Yeah. But like, how do you feel about these uh, games being streamed online? See, it, it, it's difficult. It's difficult now because in my generation, I didn't have to go through this. Mm-hmm. But as a as an athlete now, especially kids coming up trying to fulfill their their dreams of one day making it big, right? It puts a damper on it. And it puts a damper on it for me. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of these kids, they follow what these NBA players do or these NFL players do or these major league baseball players do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids, when you play games, you feed off of the crowd, right? So if you have a crowd at your game and you're doing something, the crowd gets hype, right? So now that you're streaming these games and there's no fans in the stand, there's no authenticity to it because there's no body cheering. Mm -hmm. It's a silent gym. Mm -hmm. It's like these kids actually been at 24 hour fitness, just hooping, right? And you're just hooping. But in order for you to fulfill what your purpose is of playing sports, trying to move to the next level, I mean, I understand that You should be able to do it on command. But a lot of people feed off of the crowd and it goes hand in hand, like they say about these NBA players. Mm -hmm. A lot of NBA players bench. They only perform when they're at home, but they can't take their show on the road, right? Because the pressure starts to mount up and you play great in front of your home fans. Mm -hmm. Now you got these kids that are playing and they don't have that fan support. You know, you don't have your family there watching you. You don't, so you don't know what the kids' mindsets are. You know, these kids, 
this could make or break a kid, right? Because in the day and times that we're going through, there's a lot of people that it might mess up their mental. Mm -hmm. you, might, it, it, you know, that mental illness is a real thing. And I'll say that because if you notice what Paul George experienced in the bubble, right? His game was off. Mm -hmm. He couldn't do well. The media was killing him. Then he comes out talking about he was having anxiety. His mental wasn't there, right? But he, he is a, a grown young man, right? Been in the league for a while. So he'd been through ups and downs, a severe break of the leg, bounce back. And then you go through this later on in your career. Now put that on a young kid right now that hasn't experienced that, but is trying to make it. And the way the pandemic has slowed it down and you're streaming these games, yeah, you're out there hooping, doing something that you like, but we don't know where their mental's at, right? We don't know how that's affecting them of not having people in the stands where, you know, kids like to showboat. You know, they're going to take everything from an NBA player. If you hit a three, they're going to walk down the court with the three up. <laughs> but it's a lot of things that get you going as an athlete. And when I played, when I knew that was a big crowd, oh, I'm showing out. Absolutely. But if these kids don't have that and you're going into an empty gym and you're just throwing the ball up, you're going five on five, that's a little different now in the time because you don't know where these kids' mentals at and you don't know how well they're going to perform. Yeah, I know they're having fun in that moment, but when they look back at it, when the game is over, I wonder what their conversations are. Like, man, we got to do this, man. We ain't got no crowd. And, you know, that can, that can go a lot. That can weigh heavy on a kid. So to me, I wish that it could be something else done about the situation. And we talked about the protocols with the COVID, you know, being safe and stuff like that. But I wish they could at least have their family in the stands. I know the gym is big enough to support 10 players' families where you can be spread out. Absolutely. So I wish I wish they could, you know, look into that protocol. At least they playing in front of somebody because I always reference, you know, you're just throwing it up if you ain't got no crowd in there. It's like just going out to the park and playing. You're just hooping. So that's my take on that. Absolutely. I didn't actually. That's a really good um, idea uh, point. I didn't think about that. And you think about the support system they do have is their covert. Uh, their their teammates and their coach. And most of the time, is the coach really cheering them on? No, they're probably yelling at you. So it's like, I didn't think about that. So that's really, really interesting. I hope that they can implement something so that the the uh, the kids can feel supported. Yes. Wow, that, that's pretty deep. That's mm -hmm. pretty deep. And on that, I, I'm going to leave it on that one because that was, that was the final question that I had for you. Okay. And... Yeah. Um, I did want to say thank you so much for coming on this platform. Thank Man, you anytime. for dropping these gems for us, myself included. And, um, you know, just putting us on to the game, literally, you know. Man, you know, it's, it's crazy that you said that. I, You know, I'm a firm believer, and I, I, you probably heard me say it in a few statements when I, you know, broke into my segment. I believe that there is enough for everybody to eat, right? And I'm going to keep on reiterating that. And I stand firm on that. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife talk about it all the time, man. I support people and I genuinely support people. I'm not just one that just goes out there and sees your post and just, I see it like and keep scrolling. Mm -hmm. I take time to read it, right? And if you're dropping a clip on my next podcast is dropping on that day. I click the link in the bio. I go straight to the podcast. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what you, I want to hear what you're talking about because me personally, I've learned a lot since I've started this podcast. It'll be two years coming up in um, May. Wow. And I've learned a lot from a lot of podcasters mm -hmm. and I'm not going to hold you no longer. You want to be held, but I just want to, I just want to say this right here. When I first started my first podcast, and I tell everybody, 
I started my first podcast to get my feet wet. It was me and my son. You know what I'm saying? He was eight years old at the time. Right. Okay. And eight or nine at the time. And me and him did our first podcast. And I did a few podcasts after that. And I go back and listen. And I'll be like, man, my sound quality was terrible. Mm -hmm. So in the podcast, like I tell people, you have to invest in your business. You have to build a brand and stand on it, right? Absolutely. So I have invested in some pretty expensive equipment. You know what I'm saying? So sound is key because I, I have guests on my show. And when I do these podcasts, audio podcasts, the sound clarity has to be there. I listen to a lot of people's podcasts and they have guests on the show and you can hear the ambulance rolling down the street. You, you, you can hear different stuff and that that's, that's, that's kind of a turnoff. I right. And I'll be like, man, I'll listen to it. But then I'll be like, ah, when they have guests, man, they got to get their audio right. So I invest in a lot of equipment. So a lot of podcasters, you got to invest and build a brand and stand on it. This, this is your, this is your business. Right. And Another thing is when I support somebody or I, I'm supporting them, you know what I'm saying? I've, I got my own clothing line, but I've, I've purchased so much apparel from different podcasters. As soon as I get it, I take a picture, I post it supporting so-and-so. So when I see somebody that has merchandise, I'm going to get it. I'm supporting my podcast community. That's just me personally. Mm -hmm. And when I can support somebody, and they can support me back and we rocking with each other because right now I'm on your platform, right? Mm -hmm. And my thing about it is once you drop this thing on YouTube and everybody sees it, it's going on my platforms as well. Nice. So for people out there that's listening, it's going to tune in. Y'all tune in to Tall Girl Tuesday, man. And, and you know, y'all got to rock out with her. You know what I'm saying? It's enough for everybody to eat. So generally speaking to anybody that's doing the podcast, we got to support each other, man. And once we start supporting each other, we're going to blossom. It's okay. enough for everybody to eat. Absolutely. And on that note, I can't, it's nothing that I can say to follow because I agree. But that's yeah, I want to thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you. You know, I love your platform. Man, I appreciate and, um, you. We'll continue to support each other, absolutely. And um, once everything is set, I'll definitely give you the information and I'll send you all the links and whatever else. And um, tell the people one more time how to find you. Once again, y'all know who I am. K. Sap, the man behind the mic of the Simply Bar Dropping Podcast. I'm on all your streaming platforms. All you got to do is Google or type. You can even Google me. Google me. You can Google me. Google Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. It's going to pull up in Google. I have a website, www.simplyballdropping.com. You can go on my website. You can read the bio and see how Simply Ball Dropping got started. I'm on Facebook at Simply Ball Dropping. I'm on Instagram, IG at Simply Ball Dropping Podcast. So if you're not following me, go follow your boy. Go follow I, do, I do live giveaways. I give away merchandise. Also, man, y'all, y'all, y'all tune into my marriage chronicles, man. Um, we doing big things over here, simply ball dropping, and we gotta support each other. And like I said, man, y'all support my girl, man. She's doing big things, man. Um, she does a lot of, she talks a lot of stuff that a lot of people are afraid to say, but it's her platform, that's right, and, and she's gonna use it. And that's what we need to do. We need to have people that are authentic. And say what you say what you mean. This is your platform. You don't have to hold nothing back. Absolutely. Do what you gotta do and just continue to support each other. Continue to love each other because this world needs love. That's and right. we all need to come together as one and we can make it happen. And with that, I'm gonna close it out. I appreciate you having me on your show. I enjoy myself. Big success. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And as always, thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next week.